Test, test, test. Welcome, welcome. I'm Reverend Molly McGee, and you are worshiping with Horseshoe Drive United Methodist Church. Happy Pentecost. Today is Pentecost, which is a day we recognize the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And today we're going to look at how we should be more attentive, perhaps, to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit can do for us. Sit back, relax, take a deep breath, prepare yourself and prepare your heart for the holy worship of our one true God. Amen.
please stand and we're going to sing our call to worship this morning and then remain standing for the opening.
reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness, and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Holy Spirit, the Spirit is here among us. us, us. The Spirit here is to strengthen us. The Spirit is here to move us. The Spirit is here. We gather in the Spirit's arms to be nurtured as we worship. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 8 through 17 and 25 through 27. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father that we will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been with you all this time? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of Truth whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. I have spoken these things to you while I am with you. The companion, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. Peace I leave with you. May peace I give you. I give to you not as the world gives. Don't be troubled or afraid. 
word of God for the people of God. Thanks be God. Through believers won the lost And multitudes were born again The early Christians scattered o'er the world They preached the gospel fearlessly Though some were martyred and to lions hurled They marched along in victory shall live by faith alone. The Holy Spirit gave the church in birth as reformation fires burned. In later years the great revivals came when saints would seek the Lord and pray. Oh, once again we need a holy flame to meet the challenge of today. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, move among us as we gather here. Fill us with life anew and help us know you are present with us not just today, but every day. Help us understand, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Help us understand three persons in one God. Help us understand perfect unity as one. Holy God truly is, Lord, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit. Thank you for allowing us to be guided, to be transformed, to be shaped by the power, your power in our lives. Today, Lord, we ask you to keep our hearts and minds open as always so that we hear your words to us and we recognize your presence as it moves among us. And Lord, though I'm not worthy to speak for you, I ask that you use me as a vessel to which others hear you speak. In the name of our one true God, amen. Happy Pentecost. We've moved from the season of Easter. We're moving to the season of of Pentecost. We have been through the crucifixion and the resurrection and then Jesus' ascension into heaven to be at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
and we come to the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost that you heard about in our Acts scripture. The first scripture we, you heard read was considered the day of Pentecost, the day when all were gathered and there was a large rush of wind and then tongues of fire and then everyone in the crowd who gathered there speaking different languages and not being able to understand each other could suddenly understand each other and they could hear each other and they knew they were speaking the different language but they could understand it as their own language and I'm thinking that had to be confusing to go from one minute I don't understand what you're saying I just know this group and what you're saying to seeing this wind and flames and being afraid and then all of a sudden you're hearing everyone else speak and you know what they're saying so confusing that I, I understand how some people in the crowd were like they're drunk these people are crazy these are those Jesus people they don't know what they're doing they must be drunk and so much so that Peter stood up and said they're not drunk it's only nine in the morning um, they're not drunk. They're not drunk. And let me tell you how they're not drunk. They're, they're embraced by God and by the Holy Spirit. And let me tell you that because I'm going to tell you about the prophet Joel. Remember the prophet Joel that said, Someday I will send my spirit and on that day your, your young men will see visions, your elders will dream dreams, your sons and your daughters will prophesy. All people will prophesy. That is the day that is yet to come and all people will be saved. And Peter's saying, remember the prophet Joel, this is what he's saying, that the Holy Spirit will come to us and guide us and lead us so that all can be saved. That is what the Holy Spirit, that is the first day that the Holy Spirit came to everyone. And it says later in Acts that so many were excited that 3,000 were baptized that day. 3,000, that's why we consider it the birthday of the church in some respects because so many people got excited by the power of the Holy Spirit that the church really took off and began to form, bringing us here to today. It was a powerful day. It was an impactful day, a day where they could physically feel the Holy Spirit in fire and flames, in wind, and they knew that something was different. They knew they were no longer the same. And we come to today, and we don't have... Most of us do not have that powerful impact of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we feel God's presence, but we, we give credit to Jesus. We don't really give credit to the Holy Spirit. So that's when we have the John Scripture, which is a different side of, of Pentecost, a different side of the understanding of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus is speaking with the disciples and, and teaching them again what is going to happen. And, and Philip said, show us the Father. You talk about the Father, show us the Father. And Jesus says again and again, like he says in John, he says, look, if you see me, you see the Father. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. We are one and the same. You are connected to us through me and the Father. But when I am gone, the Father will send the Comforter, the Advocate, as it sometimes said, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, will come to be with you. When I am gone, the Spirit of Truth, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, will come to be with you. And that was assurance that I'm going to leave you, but you will not be alone. You will not be alone. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are working together in perfect unity to make sure that you, you will always have the power of God with you. And yes, on that day of Pentecost, they had that excitement, that drive, that, that, that power that they could feel, even though it probably upset them to some degree, they felt it, and it changed them. And yet we're here today and we're like, okay, the Holy Spirit, kind of, you know, okay. We tend to be, which is a big fancy word, a Christocentric church as a denomination, Christocentric. That means we focus more on Jesus than on God the Father or the Holy Spirit. But we can't forget either one because we are part of the triune God. Not only do we believe in the triune God, we are part of the triune God. And I say believe in the triune God because it is very hard for us to grasp what is the Holy Spirit what is Father Son and Holy Spirit what is the triune God what is three persons in one God working in perfect harmony because we don't understand perfect harmony we have moments where we all get along and agree but we do not understand perfect harmony at all because even in the best of situations you're going to figure out something you can disagree about so Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together in perfect harmony from the beginning of time, from before the first day of creation to the end of time through eternity, when Jesus comes again, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit working together with all of creation, with us. God the Creator, Jesus, God the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, God the Sustainer. We are created, we are redeemed 
we are sustained. God has been with us from the beginning and be with us through the end. And the Holy Spirit is with us now. Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. We will say that in a few minutes with the Apostles' Creed. We know that. Jesus has ascended. He is there. We can't see Jesus. But we have the Holy Spirit and we don't get tongues of fire every day. It would be easier if we could have tongues of fire or big winds that tells us the Holy Spirit is there. But not. We have to look inward and feel the Holy Spirit. And there are days when we're excited and feel powerful and, and feel good about God in our lives and, and strong. And we're like, yes, the Holy Spirit is here. And most days in my life, it may not be this way in your life, but most days are kind of average. I don't necessarily feel the Holy Spirit unless I'm actively trying to feel the Holy Spirit. And that's something I always talk about practicing our faith. And that's something we have to do, practice feeling the Holy Spirit and knowing the Holy Spirit. Because you know what? We need to listen to the Holy Spirit. And so that's, that's what we're missing out. Not the feeling of excitement and power and joy. We're missing out on listening to the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit can tell us to do. Because the Holy Spirit isn't just going to say, be nice to each other. The Holy Spirit's going to say, get up and be powerful, be impactful. The Holy Spirit is going to guide us to do the big things in this life. But not the big things we want to do. I mean, it, we'd like it to all be about us. Remember, it, it's not about us. Remember that? We haven't said it in a while. Say it with me. It's not about me. It's not about me. It's about the kingdom of God. So the Holy Spirit is going to tell us big things to do for the kingdom of God that may not be what we want to do or may not fit into our lives the way we want it to. But we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Because if we're truly here, if we're truly followers of Jesus Christ, if we're truly believers in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit at work in all of creation at all times, then we are here to follow the Holy Spirit and to dedicate our lives to understanding what God and the Holy Spirit are saying to us. You see, that's that transformation. When we talk about transformation, the change from the inside out, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing that with us and through the us. And that's why Jesus said in the scripture, if you know me, you know God the Father and God the Son. I'm one and the same. I'm, but God's going to send the Holy Spirit to bring you in so that you're part of that perfect unity. You see, we're part of that perfection. We are not perfect. Remember, we talked about this recently going on to perfection. We're not perfect now, but we're going on to pe perfection. And God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have pulled us into that trinity, pulled us into that perfect unity. We may not see it or understand it until Jesus comes again, but we are part of it and might have glimpses again of that perfection, that perfect unity, that perfect peace that comes through knowing God, that perfect love that comes through knowing God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit who is here with us now that makes that possible. But again, first and foremost, we have to be willing to be transformed. We have to be willing to be changed, to be different, to be drunk. No, I didn't mean get drunk. But to be drunk, to let people look at us and say, there's something wrong with them, they must be drunk. They're weird, they're strange, they're different. There must be something odd about them. We have to be willing to be in the world and be odd and be different. We have to be willing to be in the world and live with a peace and understanding of God's presence that no one else outside of the faith can understand. We have to be willing to let God in so deeply that we are changed into being at peace in a world that is chaotic and violent and dangerous and frightening. And it seems contrary to say, well, how can I be at peace, especially with all the things that have happened in the last few weeks, you know, war in the Ukraine, the mass shootings, just three that have happened in the last couple of weeks, the death, the violence. How can we at be at peace with this? Because it sounds like, well, we're like, oh, everything's great. No, that's not what God would have us do. But being at peace with us is knowing and trusting that God is in place and that God is working through it. God is not making the bad things happen, but God is working through the people in those situations, bringing them through in the best way possible. We have to trust that God's hand is in that and that we can look into this sometimes dark and frightening world and see the beauty that is there. That's the call on us, I think, sometimes. 
as the children of God, the people of, of the Christian faith, is to look into the world that is violent and brutal and frightening and see beauty and see goodness. Not in all of it, but we can see through it. That perfect unity, that glimpse of love, that sense of God, that trust in God can help us see through to see the good that is happening within it. And not to be blasé, not to not care, but to mourn and to grieve with the world, but to still understand God is with us. God is with us. And to feel comfort by that. The Holy Spirit, the comforter, will come and be with us and help us find that comfort that other people can't find. It's not apathy. It's true understanding, but true faith that God has it in hand. And not just a care for those who are suffering, because we often pray for those who are suffering, and we should continue to pray for those who are suffering, because sooner or later we're all suffering. But to pray for those who may be the enemy or the aggressor or the one perceived to be causing the harm. It's harder to pray for those people we see as on the wrong side. But we decide it's the wrong side. I mean, um, you know, it's hard to say in God's world where God sees it and God loves all people and God loves all of creation and sees the damage and sees the danger but can still find the love for those who are part of it all. That's what it means when we say see without God's eyes and love with God's eyes. To let the Holy Spirit truly transform you is to truly see the best and worst through the eyes of love. Because saying the best and worst is our our judgment. Not God's judgment, but our judgment. To see situations and wars and violence without judgment. I'm not saying this is easy. I'm not saying I have it figured out. But I think that's where God is leading us through. That's the transformation that needs to happen. And we'll talk more about this in the coming weeks as we focus on the Holy Spirit. Because I think the Holy Spirit is guiding us to something bigger. It's easy to look at our own lives and our own selves and our own world. And we should look at our own lives and our own selves and our own world and those people. We shouldn't ignore that. But not to look at it with blinders so that we're always looking down. And just seeing what's in front of us without seeing what's around us. And one, you can't see the beauty in the world if you're just looking down to see the beauty in your own life. But also you can't see where God is at work or where your hand might need to be at work because that's the other side of perfect unity. That's the other side of what the Holy Spirit is leading us to is not just to sit and be at peace and let everything happen. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is saying, get up and act. Get up and speak. Right or wrong, correct an injustice. And we don't know when that's going to come, and we don't know how, what form that's going to take. And if we're so convinced that our side is right or our point of view is the only point of view, we're never going to hear the Holy Spirit try and transform us into God's point of view. Because I can tell you, my point of view is very different from God's point of view. I try to have God's point of view, but believe me, I can be pretty convinced of what I think is right and wrong. And I'll share that with you anytime time I like to share my opinions. I'm, you know, I know I'm not alone in that. But my faith journey, my life, as I try harder every day to dedicate my life to Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as I try to listen to the Holy Spirit, I try to see as God sees and see a bigger image than what my thoughts and beliefs may see. We're told as clergy when we go into church, just love them, just love them. And I never understood that for many years in ministry. I never understood that, just love them. Until I came across a few, I'm not going to say who, and doesn't mean they're in this this gathering, but a few who have been difficult to love. But it doesn't matter what I say is right or wrong, or what... A certain person's behavior is, my job is to love them as they are because God loves me 
as I am and God loves you as you are. You see? The Holy Spirit is asking us for some big changes, some big transformation. And I think that's why we kind of put the Holy Spirit back over here because it's good to Jesus and the resurrection and excitement. It's good to talk about that. And we we do a day of Pentecost. Okay, we'll give the Holy Spirit a day, but let's put the Holy Spirit aside because the Holy Spirit is asking us to change and we don't like change. The Holy Spirit is asking us to do things differently. Because the Holy Spirit is pulling us into that perfect unity. That perfection that is God. And we're fighting it because, you know, we're broken and messed up. And so we fight it as much as we can. But the Holy Spirit, the faith in God and the faith in us. It's not our faith in God that's the strongest. It's God faith, God's faith in us that is the strongest. That keeps the Holy Spirit coming back and saying, you can do this. You can do this. But we have to open ourselves to that transformation. We have to be ready to change and not just our behaviors, but our attitudes. We have to learn to love not just the people we like, but even those who are harmful. You don't have to move them into your house. You don't even have to give them a big wet kiss. You just have to be willing to love them and know them and know they're broken and know they deserve forgiveness like every other one of us. That takes work and that takes power. And I wish we could sit here and have a big wind rush in and tongues of fire drop on us and have this powerful feeling that the Holy Spirit is with us and we're going to change the world, but it's not necessarily going to happen. So it's on us then to work and look for the Holy Spirit and open our hearts to that feeling of power and open our hearts to that feeling of excitement and you can and it happens. It's happened to me, it happens sometimes and I wish I could say it happens to me every day but it doesn't. And I'm being honest here because my, you know, me takes over. And I look through my life with my blinders on and my head down and I don't notice because it's easier just to go through and do the same routine every day sometimes and actually look out and see where maybe change needs to happen. So at the very least, I will say that I'm always trying to to open myself up to change. I'm not successful at it, but I'm trying. And I think there is something in that that God understands about all of us. We're always just trying. Trying our best to be followers of Jesus Christ. Trying our best to listen for the Holy Spirit. Trying our best being strong enough for transformation so that when the Holy Spirit speaks and we're certain of it that we can act so that we can act Jesus said I am in the Father and the Father is in me when you know me you know the Father when you know the Father you know me and when I am gone the Father will send the Comforter the Advocate the Holy Spirit to come and be with you We are never alone. God is always with us. God, Father, Son, and Spirit in some form is always with us. Jesus promised us that, and Jesus lives through that promise. And then Jesus said, peace be with you. My peace I leave with you. Do not be troubled. Jesus didn't just say peace, you know, like we do peace be with you and let it go. Jesus said, my peace be with you. My peace, my peace that is God, that is holy, that knows that everything is going to be okay. My peace I leave with you so you can have it. Jesus didn't say, do not be troubled because I know you're going to be troubled. So, you know, like we would just say, have a good day. No, Jesus wasn't saying that. Jesus said, do not be troubled. God is with you. I'm going back to the Father, but the Holy Spirit is going to be with you, and you are not going to be alone, and you do not need to be troubled in this world because you are with me and we are with you. And through us, you will understand perfect unity. Maybe not completely, and maybe in only little moments, and maybe in little glimpses, or maybe in, in, in moments where you hear God and you feel confident, and maybe in moments where you think you're hearing God, but you're not really sure. Jesus said, do not be troubled. We're going to be there. We're going to be there. We're going to be with you. 
And we're not going to send you into anything that you can't handle or that you can't do because we're going to be there with you. But we're going to ask you to do some big things. And we're going to ask you to change the way you see the world and change the way you think. And we're going to ask you through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to ask you to be part of the kingdom of God which is not the kingdom of the United States or not the kingdom of the world and not the kingdom of this, that, and the other. We're going to ask you to be part of the kingdom of God and work for the kingdom of God first and foremost. And that's not easy. And our world, which pulls us in other directions, our world, which tells us, no, you need to be here first. You need to do this first. We're more important. Because everything in the world is telling you it's more important. And God doesn't say, I'm more important. God says, I'm with you. And when you're ready, follow me. When you're ready, listen. And I'll, tell, I'll give you guidance in what to do. I'll give you the words to say. I'll give you the action to do. But be ready. Be ready to respond. Be willing to try. My peace I leave with you. Do not be troubled and try to understand what the kingdom of God is all about. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be seated. For our prayer time today, we're going to be quiet because sometimes I think to listen you need to be quiet and I think our prayers sometimes are just full of words. Not that they're not, don't have heart and love in them, but I think we get caught up in the words. So I'm going to open us in prayer, offer some time of silence, and then close us and we'll move forward. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, speak to us. Help us feel your presence and help us open our hearts to whatever you may have in store for us as a church 
and in store for each and every one of us as your people. Holy Spirit, help us hear you in the silence. Help us hear you through the clutter. Help us know you through all the noise that the world brings in. And truly remind us, truly remind us that you are present and with us no matter what happens in the world. You are with us, offering us peace. We pray this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise. You may be seated. Gather your communion elements. If you're worshiping away or worshiping with us, gather your communion elements as we work through our prayers of Holy Communion. And if you've never noticed, when we say the Apostles' Creed, it comes in three parts. Honoring the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When we say our prayers of Holy Communion, it comes in three parts. Honoring God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's important to notice 
that towards the end of the prayer, before we get to the, to the Lord's Prayer, but as we get to the end of the prayer, um, where I raise my hands and say, pour out your Holy Spirit, that's known as the words of invocation. That is when what we receive as bread and juice become the body and blood of Christ. Not that they are transformed, but that we are open to the real presence of Jesus Christ in consuming them. And it comes through those words that are said, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and these gifts of bread and wine. Something to listen to for as we continue with the prayers of Holy Communion. Let us pray. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent to, of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we have confessed that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on, his, on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with each other, one with Christ, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And with the confidence of the children of God, we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We are one body who received together the body and blood of Christ. Now receive the body and blood of Christ.
We have received the spirit of grace, the spirit of truth, the spirit of pure love, the spirit that will guide us for every day, all of our days through the end of time. Amen. Please rise for your benediction. First note, United Methodist Men's work day is next, this coming Saturday, the 11th. The 11th, what time? 9 to 12. Men, come work. Enjoy yourselves. Um, <laughs> blood drive's still going on. I'm going to run over there. Anybody else who still wants to give, there's still some time. Amen. Amen. We have the Holy Spirit with us. We have the grace of Jesus Christ carrying us forward. We have the love of God, the creator who brought us into the world. And together we will never be alone as we glimpse that perfect unity that God provides for us. Let us always be open to the Holy Spirit and those glimpses of perfection that God provides for us. Go today in peace, go in love, and go say yes to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.